Jude has $100 to invest. He can buy shares of a beach resort at Miami, which pays him for each dollar invested, $3 if year is hot and $0 if year is cold. All right, so uh, resort investment. So for each dollar, it becomes, all right? So we're not talking about how much more money you're gonna get. Uh, here, those are, be careful about it. Uh, $1 becomes uh, $3, meaning you, you, you get additional $2 with, if year is hot, and your dollar becomes zero, meaning you lose your entire investment if the weather is cold. All right. So I'm assuming that here the uncertainty is going to be whether the uh, weather is hot or cold. So there are two, again, events. Uh, obviously, there might be more than two events. Uh, so two is the simplest uh, environment. He can buy shares of a ski resort at Vermont. So uh, this is resort investment in Miami versus he can buy a resort in Vermont. Uh, it's all about skiing, I guess, uh, which pays for each dollar invested, uh, $4 if the year is cold. So $4 if the weather is cold. And uh, if the year is... And, and minus one, meaning you, you lose $2 if the year is hot. All right, so minus one if, if hot, uh, because there's not going to be enough of snow, and so you're going to make loss, but your loss is going to be much. So as you see, by the way, um, you know, the Miami investment is like two versus zero, uh, you know, for the same uh, events. Vermont investment is minus one versus four. It's like... Vermont is, is uh, uh, how should I say, the, the dispersion is, is, is higher. I mean, it's not dispersion really. It's, I don't know why I'm using this uh, word. Um, I mean, it may be, so the, the extremes, you know, one extreme is the, the, you know, the $4, the other extreme, or the two scenarios, uh, you know, it's either much more profitable than the Miami investment or much worse than the uh, uh, Miami investment. All right. So it's like, um, but, but here in the Miami, it's sort of, you know, you may win or lose, but at least the outcomes are closer to each other here. The outcomes are, are highly, uh, far away from each other, but nevertheless, all it matters is, is, is the, the mean, right? The expected value. Um, I have a question. go ahead, Vladimir. Uh, shouldn't it be three for Miami if it's hot? Um, Yes, it is. I don't know why I put two. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, I do make a lot of small mistakes uh, when I get tired. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. What else? The probability that the year is cold. Now, they expect that the year is going to be cold with probability 0.5. Well, therefore, it's going to be hot with probability 0.5. And obviously, the probability that the weather is going to be cold or hot has nothing to do with your investment. I mean, the, the weather is not going to be cold because you invested in Miami or, or Vermont resort. Okay. So it's, I mean, your decision is, is, I'm sorry, the, the, the weather's, the weather situation is independent of your investment, but your investment depends on the weather conditions. So here, the causality is important. Jude's utility function is u of x equals squared of x. Well, I can immediately say this is a risk averse guy because I know square root of x is a concave function where x is his realized final wealth once again. So instead of w, this time the question uses x. Suppose that Jude invests a fraction lambda of his wealth, uh, very much similar by the way, the question, uh, on the beach result and one minus lambda on the ski result, uh, resort. So calculate Jude's expected return uh, expected utility, and then what value of lambda maximizes expected return and expected utility, all right? So there's, you know, first find the expected values and then find the optimal lambda. Um, okay, so here I'm going to again draw some sort of uh, table, um, meaning 
I'm going to write down uh, realized uh, wealth, but do I need a bigger space? Uh, probably I do. So let me write it here. So event one and event two. Uh, this time my events do have a name, right? Hot weather, cold weather. So if you like, you can use them. So hot weather, this is my event one and cold weather, this is my event two. So in the hot weather, I need to write the final, uh, realized final wealth. But this depends on how much investments you make on Miami Resort and how much investment you make on Vermont Resort. So here, what this guy is doing, he has $100 and he's going to split this as 100 lambda dollars to Miami, right? Lambda goes for Miami, yes. And 100, one minus lambda goes to Vermont investment, all right? So if lambda, for example, half, that means he invests on Miami Resorts $50 and the remaining 50 goes to Vermont. If lambda is, for example, one over four, it means only $25 on Miami investment and $75 on Vermont, all right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to write the realized final wealths for each resort investment and then add them up to calculate the final uh, realized wealth. Very similar to the previous question. So here, uh, so on top, uh, I'm gonna put the Miami resort investment and here I have the Vermont uh, resort investment. So this guy, remember, is investing 100 lambda and when the weather is hot on, under event one, his dollar is gonna become three. So because he invested 100 lambda, it's gonna be 100 lambda times three, all right? So once again, let me do it just once. A dollar investment, let me not put arrow there. A dollar investment becomes three dollars. Um, if you invested 100 lambda dollars, how much is it gonna be? Well, you know, we just multiply these two. So it's gonna be 300 lambda. Well, what about the Vermont? The where Vermont, your initial investment is 100 times one minus lambda. And if it is hot, you're losing, right? Dollar is becoming minus one. So 100 one minus uh, lambda is basically becoming uh, minus 100 one minus lambda, okay? All right, now let's look at the event two, meaning what if the weather is, 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 is cold? Well, once again, the Miami investment is bringing you zero dollars for each dollar investment. So one becomes zero. What is gonna be if you invest in 100 lambda? Well, 100 lambda times zero. So it's gonna be zero dollars. So these are all dollars. And finally, if you invest Vermont and if the weather is cold, remember a dollar was becoming four, so therefore you're gonna have 400 one minus lambda. So that means if the weather under event one, your final realized wealth is gonna be this guy, uh, 300 lambda minus, oops, 100 one minus lambda. All right, so in short, uh, this is going to be minus 100 plus 100 lambda, so it's going to be 400 lambda minus 100, okay? Uh, what about this? Well, the final realized wealth is going to be 400 1 minus lambda, or 400 minus 400 lambda, okay? So, now I'm going to write... Uh, now I can erase all this, by the way, because I am done with... Uh, calculating realized final wealth. So by the way, this is not a coincidence, but in any question uh, of this sort, um, basically everything boils down whether you are writing those realized final wealths correctly or not. And then whether you write the expected utility or expected return correctly or not. Uh, the rest is actually pretty straightforward and easy. Like, I mean, what lambda maximizes, for example, you just take derivative, set it equal to zero. So here, uh, expected return. 
Well, what is expected return? Well, there's no utility there. In expectation, how much money is this guy gonna make? All right, that's, that's expected return. Expected utility, how much utility in expectation this guy is gonna get out of his investment? All right, obviously, our uh, expected uh, return and expected utility are the same thing if, for example, the decision maker is risk neutral and his utility function is u of x is equal to x. Again, if this is your utility function, von Neumann Morgenstern utility function, well, then expected return and expected utility are exactly the same thing. But if you have risk aversion or risk loving sort of different risk attitudes, well then expected return and expected utility will be two different things. Um, all right, so expected return, uh, let me denote it by ER. Um, so expected return is basically the following. What is the probability that the weather is gonna be hot? It's one half, 0.5, times, you know, how much money you're gonna get if this is the realized event. Well, you're gonna get 400 uh, lambda minus $100. Very good. What is the probability that the weather is gonna be cold? One half. And how much money are you expecting to get at this uh, event? 400 uh, minus 400 lambda. I just open up this parenthesis. That's it, that's the expected revenue. Uh, well, I'm not gonna see, well, do I, well, we do. Uh, let me leave it as is, you know, I mean, I think this is pretty straightforward. The rest is like what lambda maximizes this expected return. Um, I think for this question, there's one trick though. Uh, let, me, let me calculate this. I'm gonna ignore expected utility maybe. So here, this is 200 lambda uh, minus 200 lambda, right? So therefore it's gonna be zero lambda. And I have minus 50, uh, but plus 200, so it's 500 and, uh, I'm sorry, 150. So this is expected return. So remember this question was asking what lambda maximizes uh, expected return. So what would be your answer? Hmm? Um, can we say that lambda is independent of expected return? Uh, no, you can say expected return is independent of lambda. All right, yes, sorry. Okay, so therefore, um, you know, it really doesn't matter. Expected return is independent of lambda and hence, you know, the question of what lambda maximizes expected return? Well, I mean, what would be sort of the correct answer? Uh, well, the, the best answer is, well, expected return is independent of lambda and hence, uh, uh, I mean, uh, no lambda can maximize his expected return, okay? Uh, so that would be the correct answer. So what about expected utility? Well, the expected utility, the only difference, guys, the same wealth levels, but this time we care about how much utility he at attaches to those uh, wealths. So therefore, it's gonna be one half times utility of this number, 400 lambda. Uh, minus 100 plus one half utility of 400 minus 400 lambda. So what is the utility function? It's the square root. So I'm not gonna spend another line. So I'm, I'm just gonna put square root here. So this is what expected utility is, all right? So uh, you can just leave it as is because I can't really do anything further than this. I can't add them up. Uh, the next question is what lambda maximizes expected utility? Well, this time expected utility depends on lambda, clearly. As I increase lambda, this term will increase, but this term will decrease. So therefore, uh, lambda is not gonna be one. Uh, is it, maybe it will be, I don't know, uh, but, but it's, it's not so obvious. Um, so what I have to do, I basically take the derivative of uh, you know, this, utility function with respect to lambda, set it equal to zero and solve for it. Uh, but I think the rest is uh, completely easy and manageable for you guys. So I, for that reason, ignore the rest of the question. Any, any question? 